Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And we're here at the Qualcomm Tech Summit in Maui in Hawaii. Now, they did pick a pretty incredible place to do some really key announcements for the upcoming year of 2018, but the Snapdragon 845 is obviously going to be what powers a lot of Android smartphones in 2018, so of course it's going to be a huge deal, and they brought us a number of different points that we should keep in mind about what the 845 will be able to provide to manufacturers and their smartphones. Now, there's one thing to remember here. Qualcomm is not only providing the chipsets and the actual hardware that they can use in their smartphones, but also a ton of different resources that allow them to better tune the hardware for their devices. Now, it's up to the manufacturers to take advantage of all of these features, so we're going to see who, like Samsung or any other Android manufacturer, might actually take advantage of everything that we talked about here at the keynote. But speaking of the keynote, they gave five different pillars as to what the 845 is going to be able to provide to smartphone devices and beyond, because they're hoping that the Snapdragon 845 can actually power even more. The first pillar was in regards to immersion. Now, that involves not only mixed, virtual, or augmented reality, putting them all together, they call it XR. In a couple of demos, Qualcomm showed off a few new features in the artificial intelligence area, including eye tracking and also hand tracking. But immersion also deals with capturing the moment, whether it be through video or photo. And to that end, there is a dedicated core in the Snapdragon 845 that will deal with processing photos and video. And there are a number of enhancements that are afforded to the cameras on smartphones if they take advantage of this core. For example, having much better color volume. This involves not only having better color depth going from 8-bit to 10-bit capture, but also widening the color gamut. Qualcomm is also tipping their own hat to computational photography in that multi-frame capture is going to be used to create cinema graphs, for example. This was a specific use case scenario where the camera is always shooting a bunch of photos, and when you hit the shutter button, it takes something of a live photo that you might remember from the Pixel 2. But this time around, you can actually pick the portion of the photo that remains live while the rest of it is a still image. Makes for some pretty stylistic captures, and it's something that we would love to try out on future smartphones. And we have seen a lot of depth sensing uh, demos from Qualcomm in the past when we visited their offices, but here they're using depth sensing in order to create what they call deep portraits. So not only are pictures going to be a uh, high quality because of the wider color volume, but now depth sensing will allow for even more accurate portrayals of the portraits or the subjects inside of your portraits. The Adreno 630 will bring even better graphics performance, including 30% more performance that should be able to make even games like Lineage run even faster than before. Security was also a big deal for the Snapdragon 845 as it now has what is called an SPU. It's a standalone unit that provides security for the entire device without having to rely on any other part of the chipset or even the phone. It's a standalone unit uh, that has its own power and stores all of the security data points inside of itself. And then the next pillar was about performance and we already talked about the fact that Snapdragon 835 powered laptops can potentially get something like 20 hours of video playback time and that is something that they wanted to highlight once again. However, with the Snapdragon 845, you're going to get that kind of power potentially with smartphones as well. The main example that they gave was in recording time for their new standard in the immersion category, which is basically 4K 60 frames per second. And in, according to their specifications, you would be able to record for up to four hours total on one battery charge. Now, one thing I really enjoyed about this section of the presentation was that they announced Quick Charge 4.0. Now, that's something that you were probably expecting, but what you probably did not expect was the fact that Quick Charge 4.0 chargers will be able to charge power delivery devices as well. If you have a Quick Charge 4.0 charger in order to quickly charge your smartphones and they will be able to get to 50% battery life in just 15 minutes, well, you can use the same charger to fully charge at full speed, let's say your Nintendo Switch. It's part of this entire idea that Quick Charge should be the standard that allows you to use maybe just one cable for all of your devices. Now the final pillar was connectivity, and if you search for Qualcomm pretty much anywhere on the internet right now, you're going to see one key term, and that's 5G. 5G speeds are really what Qualcomm wants to push forward, and according to them, 5G is going to be a thing in early 2019, so you can look forward to that at least. But Gigabit LTE is something that we can experience these days, especially in Wi-Fi networks, and wireless networks are trying to catch up to it. So you'll be able to have super fast internet, and the Snapdragon 845 sees a 20% increase in the kinds of speeds it can provide to its 
those devices. Now, one other portion of it is Bluetooth, and with Bluetooth 5 and uh, enhanced protocols under Bluetooth, uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention. As you probably know by now, I'm a big fan of Truly Wireless earbuds, and one enhancement that they did give on stage was uh, the fact that Truly Wireless earbuds can actually have better battery life. And the reason why is because uh, phones that use the Bluetooth radio in the Snapdragon 4 845 will be able to broadcast to both earbuds as long as they are catered to such a signal. Right now, Truly Wireless earbuds require one of them to be the master earbud, and then it tries to route the signal over to the other earbud for left and right channel audio. But this time, the phone will be able to broadcast to both of them at the same time, basically cutting the power consumption effectively in half. Now, this is very similar to the Bluetooth standard that allows for broadcasting to multiple Bluetooth devices, like let's say two to five. There's not really a number there, but you can broadcast to multiple Bluetooth speakers at once. And this is a standard that should be able to help those of you out there who really do like your Bluetooth audio. So I did my best to kind of give you a quick snapshot of all the stuff that you should know from the keynotes about the Snapdragon 845 today. But we also have an article written by Robert Triggs, and he provided a wonderful bevy of information that you can check out at androauthority.com. You can also check out the other coverage we have here at the Tech Summit here in Maui, uh, of course, run by Qualcomm, who just announced the Snapdragon 845. Now, keep it to Android Authority for even more, and you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to keep up with all of that coverage and more. Don't forget to like our videos and also to comment on our videos when you have a chance, because, of course, we are your source for all things Android.